Hi, I'm Chef Jonathan Collins, and this is my kitchen. Join me for six exciting episodes of Cuisinart Culinary School, and I'll prove you're not too busy to cook. I'll teach you passionate, healthy, and simple cooking for your family. What we got to do? Answering questions nice. about ingredients, techniques, recipes, and tools. Master French culinary basics, and you'll always cook with confidence. This knife is a must in your kitchen. This is a chef knife. A good quality knife will eliminate frustration. Let me show you five critical cuts you'll need to make any of the dishes in this cooking series. The first is brunoise, which is a small, fine dice. You can do small, medium, or large. I'm simply gonna take this onion, slice it in half. I'm going to take the root tip off, and I'm gonna take the head off as well, where the sprout would come out. Peel back one or two layers, depending on the freshness of the onion. Simply run the knife, passing through almost to the root. And what you're doing is you're creating a line and dividing the onion, but it's being held together nicely by the root. A couple quick passes, one, two, and then rocking the knife, holding it with a pinch grip, not putting your finger on top, but holding the pinch grip and rolling the fingers underneath. What you can do is you can begin to slice off an absolutely perfect brunoise or fine dice. Isn't that great? Another very simple cut is the julienne. Julienne is long and thin. Watch as I bring this simply off the edge of the pepper. I'm just gonna set that down. With the skin side down, I'll begin to roll nice two to three millimeter cuts. And what I end up with is an absolutely perfect julienne of the red pepper. Next, the chiffonade. Simply take the leaves of the basil. This is great for spinach or any leafy greens. And what you wanna do is just layer them on top of one another, starting with the largest, and then roll them into a tight little cigar. The reason you do this is because it won't break and make the greens go black. And I'm just gonna roll through that. You can see how nicely that comes together. So that when I separate it, what I've got is I've got a nice chiffonade, but not bruised. The next is the paysan. So I'm gonna use the leek, slicing off the tip and the top. And I'm just going to take, and I'm gonna reserve the outside for the bouquet garnier in just a moment. And I'm gonna slice through the leek once and once again. And paysan is two to three millimeters. So this is nice edible sizes of uh, a vegetable. Beautiful uniform cuts. And the reason why it's so important to have uniform cuts is that everything cooks all the same. The very last is mirepoix. Now mirepoix is both a cut and a French term for carrots, celery, and onion. And it's just this simple to accomplish. Slice it into manageable sizes, quarter it, starting with the celery. And then I'm gonna do about four to five millimeter cuts. And the reason that we do this with mirepoix is mirepoix is often used as a flavor base. So we want the pieces big enough that they can take the heat roasting with bones or they'll stay whole putting them in the bottom of a soup. Again, half the carrot and then I'm going to quarter it. Same size cuts, four to five millimeters. You see the uniform size. And the very last thing is the onion, which I'm just simply gonna split in half. I'm gonna take the root tip, and I'm gonna take the top off. Peel one or two layers based on the freshness, and then dividing this by either two or three, or in this case, four, based on the size of the onion. And then cuts again, four to five millimeters apart. And what you end up with is this beautiful, base 
that you can use in all kinds of applications. But the next time you're asked for mirepoix, julienne, chiffonade, brunoise, or any of these cuts, you'll have the confidence to use these. In French cuisine, you cannot be without the bouquet garnier. The bouquet garnier is a combination of fresh thyme, fresh parsley, leek, and all you do is simply tie them together. I'm going to put a couple peppercorns in there, four or five, and roll that into a tight little cigar with the string around it once and twice and a quick tie. This can be dropped into your soup, into your stocks, or into your sauces, giving it a level of flavor that you will never want to be without again. Stocks are full of flavor and essential for great food. I'm gonna teach you three, a beef, a chicken, and a vegetable stock that will elevate all of your cuisine. It's just this simple. A base of flavor, carrots, celery, onion, mirepoix, with some leek and mushrooms and some unpeeled garlic. All of these combined together can all stand the heat of the oven and when we put the bones on top, it'll begin to develop incredible flavor. A little bit of olive oil or vegetable oil. And I was able to pick up these bones. So I'm gonna set these into the uh, flavor base, just like that. No seasoning at this level is necessary. I've got a 450 degree oven. I've got an oven safe pan. I'm gonna pop this in and we'll come back when it's nicely browned in about 60 minutes. With 60 minutes gone by, these bones have come along so nicely. You can see they've begun to develop caramelization and flavor. And what that means is all of that is gonna be captured in the stock. I'm gonna remove the bones, put them into a stock pot. The smell is just incredible. Little trick, leave a, a pad on it so you don't burn yourself. I've got a tablespoon here of tomato paste. I'm gonna mix that into the hot liquid because I want that to begin to cook. Transfer all of this into the pan. And then a quick cover with water. And I'll turn this again, medium high heat. I'll allow it to uh, come up to boil and turn it down to a simmer. Watch for a time when the impurities begin to come to the top and I'll slowly skim those off to purify this gorgeous beef stock. The color has developed nicely on this beef stock. You see I can skim both additional or extra fat as well as any of the impurities off the top. It's great if you can to make stocks in big batches ahead of time because they can be frozen and used at your convenience. The chicken stock or white stock is even simpler. It's just a matter of the flavor base. So again, carrots, celery, leek and onions. I've got unpeeled garlic and a bay leaf. Full dump into the pan. Five or six peppercorns, whole peppercorns. Remember, we'll be straining these out. A couple whole cloves. You want to use chicken carcass or something with bone. Remember, the flavor is going to come from the bone. I've got the bouquet garnier that we made earlier. That's going to be a great flavor base. And then I've got three liters of water. So I'm going to pour to cover with three liters. That's one and a half and another one and a half. I'm going to turn this on high heat to bring it up to temperature. No seasoning, no salt, uh, because as it concentrates, we don't want to increase the salt level. I'm going to turn it on medium to high heat, and then I'm going to wait for it to begin to develop and skim some of the uh, impurities that come to the surface as it cooks. Now that the chicken stock has been simmering away for about 20 or 30 minutes, I'm going to remove all of the impurities off the top by just ladling off this tiny little skim layer and getting rid of it. It's amazing how much flavor you get out of a simple vegetable stock. And you don't have to use the very best vegetables to get great results. What I have here is a selection of some of my favorites. 
I've got leek, green pepper. I've got some mushrooms that were a little past their prime. I wouldn't necessarily use them for anything other than stock. I've got the bouquet garnier going in, celery, tomato, turnips, carrots. I've got cloves punched into this half onion and fresh parsley and also parsnips. Everything into the pot. First of all, eating with your eyes, it looks amazing just looking into the pot. I'm gonna bring that up with three liters of cold water. Some peppercorns again. I'll bring this up to temperature, watch for it, and as the impurities come to the top, I'll skim those off and begin to finish this stock. The vegetable stock's been on for about an hour now. There's just a few impurities to skim off to make sure that the stock will be crystal clear. This beef stock is now ready. It's been simmering for about two and a half to three hours. I'm gonna quickly remove the bones. If I don't, they're, go they're gonna come splashing down into uh, my pot when I strain it. Be careful with this, it's hot, the smell. What's coming out of this pan is just incredible. It's, it's a strong concentration of beef flavor. What you need, and I'm gonna pull that bouquet garnier out as well. What you need is a fine sieve. The fine sieve will get any of the, of the extra stuff you might want. You know, the large sieve is not enough. You need the fine sieve. So let's get a clean pour here and see what we're left with. Check out the color and the texture of this beautiful beef stock. I can tell you already, just by the look and smell of it, that we've done a great job. I want to show you a quick technique for getting the most out of your stock. If you hold the sieve and just tap it lightly like this, you can see every last little bit of the goodness inside is going to come pouring into your stock. And that's what you're looking for, that golden brown of highly developed, beautiful flavor. This can be done with both the vegetable stock as well as the chicken or white stock. It's a simple process that you won't regret. Mother sauces are the bedrock of French cuisine. The first is the roux, it's the basic. I've got a hot pan here and in is going 75 grams of unsalted butter. Immediately the butter begins to melt. The difference between a white roux and a brown roux is that the white roux is mild in flavor where the brown roux has been developed. The butter has been caramelized and browned and the difference is intensity of flavor. Right now I'm gonna start by making a white roux. So I've got 75 grams of butter and 75 grams of unbleached white flour. I'm just gonna whisk those together. And what starts to happen immediately is the roux turns into a paste. This will need to be cooked for about five minutes on low heat to make sure that we really cook it completely. We don't want that flour flavor in whatever we add it to. Roux can be stored cold in the freezer. You can roll it into little tubes and then just slice off a piece of it to drop in something that you need to thicken. Today we're going to be making a bechamel, which is the next step in mother sauces. And we're gonna add cold milk to this hot roux, which will give us expansion very, very quickly, making it smooth and luxurious instead of lumpy. Now that the roux has cooked for a couple minutes, it's ready for one liter of milk. We're gonna use whole milk. And you can see the moment we start to pour it in, what happens is the milk will almost instantly begin to thicken because of the roux. It's important to use a cold liquid or a hot roux or a hot liquid and a cold roux. That way you'll really make sure that you have absolutely no lumps in your bechamel. And this is a bechamel, so another one of the uh, mother sauces, a base for the next sauce that we're going to prepare, which is a Mornay. Got some fresh nutmeg that's going in. Nutmeg is very fragrant and classic in the bechamel. 
And what you should do is really stay with this and just whisk it. It'll come along. Man, that nutmeg is beautiful. You're going to put a little pinch of white pepper in. You want to keep this sauce white. So we're going to give it a little bit of depth with a little bit of heat, a little bit of fragrance from the nutmeg. Now that the bechamel has thickened up nicely, I've got some beautiful shredded Gruyere to go in. It's very fragrant and it's going to make a gorgeous textured sauce. Mix that thoroughly and we've very simply gone through roux, bechamel and mornay in no time at all. And what you end up with is a base for many, many sauces. This uh, Mornay is very common in macaroni and cheese, used to top vegetables. Uh, and you'll see as we go through the series that the bechamel will come up time and again. This is one to practice at home, there's no question. These two soups are a culmination of all the hard work we've done today. Those stocks we've prepared are now going to go into two soups. A roasted butternut squash soup and soup paysan. I'm going to show you what goes into it and show you how simple it is. Here we've got some red onion, parsley leaves, celery, leek, carrot. I've got some skin on potatoes, our bouquet garnier tomato and turnip, all of the very best from my garden this season. And this gorgeous chicken stock or white stock we prepared. And have a look at the color. It is absolutely alive. And you know what? You know what went into this stock. I'm going to top it up with a bit of water. And I've got Buckwheat, I'll put a couple tablespoons of buckwheat. Now because we didn't season before, we're going to season now. Remember if we had seasoned before, we have the problem where as the stock reduces, the seasoning intensifies. Now is the time to season. Some salt and some black pepper. I'm going to put that on the stove and let it come up to temperature. When all those vegetables are cooked, I'll have a perfect soup paysan. I've sauteed these veg for about 10 minutes until they're tender. This is mirepoix again. Carrot, celery, onion and leek. And the reason that I've done that is I've already roasted some butternut squash in the oven. So this I've roasted for about an hour and I let them cool in the oven. Now we've got this beautiful roasted butternut squash. The flavor base of the mirepoix and we're going to combine it with that vegetable stock. So I'm just going to look at that. I'm just going to scoop out some of this. Beautiful. Of course, I wouldn't miss a single piece of this, but for demonstration purposes, I want to show you how fast and simple it is to make incredible food. See how bright that is? And I honestly, I wish you could smell this. It is absolutely unbelievable. When you roast, uh, squash with just a little bit of salt and pepper in the oven, what happens is all of the flavors, they begin to concentrate. They begin to caramelize and they are unbelievable. Here's our vegetable stock. In it goes. Now of course the vegetable stock is unseasoned. It's very fragrant and I'm just going to use a little bit of cream. If I use too much cream, I'm going to dull the senses and the flavor of this. So just a little bit. Again, it's a cream soup, a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper and then this miracle little wand, the immersion blender. They're powerful and they make short work of any soup or sauce. And all you do is just work all of those ingredients together and when this comes together, what you end up with is a beautiful, luxurious sauce or soup that just is truly unbelievable. Every last ingredient in this butternut squash soup has now been perfectly combined. The only thing left is to taste it. Oh, it smells incredible. Mm. And what a finish. When you have the right tools, 
and the right techniques, you can accomplish anything in the kitchen.